Hello everyone, I'm the Vacuuminator. I'm Buster. And this week in Toku, we're going to be discussing the latest on the Tetsuro Karada um, controversy, the new episodes of Power Rangers and Super Sentai, and two major premieres. But before we get into all that, Buster, how was your week? It was actually a pretty good week when you boil it down. Um, I started getting into Bionic. I finally got that Wally video I've been planning released, and also I started getting into Bionicle, so that's fun. Excellent, that's good to hear. Which, and Bionicle's basically Toku when you boil it down, but then we're not going to have the discussion. <laughs> I've been I've been just getting progressively busy each week, and this week was no exception to that, which would explain um, a little bit of housekeeping I need to get into before we progress too far into the episode, which is that... Uh, Last uh, week, on last week's episode, there was an audio glitch from about 32 minutes and 7 seconds to an hour, 8 minutes, and 42 seconds. Um, The audio is just gone, and it appears as a prolonged, almost uh, TV sensor-sounding beep. Um, uh, Some people were upset by this, and I want to go ahead and apologize to everyone because it's totally my fault, because I do edit this show every week, and I'll admit, I was in a bit of a rush to get it out last week. I wasn't exactly checking everything like I normally do, because I knew it was larger files, and it was all going to take longer times to render and upload, so I kind of just got home that day and was like, all right, get it done, get it done, get it done, get it done. Um, It's a glitch that has happened to me a couple times before in the early days of analytical fanboys, um, just every once in a while when importing an audio file that's larger than 45 minutes into uh, the video editor use, it will just glitch out. Like I have no idea why. Normally, if I remove the file, save the, prog- save the um, editing file, close the program, open it back up and re-import it, it goes fine. But I have to catch it in order to do that. I just didn't catch it this time. And, um, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get up a fixed version anytime soon because to do that would take an entire, uh, night's worth of work because that is how long rendering and uploading that, uh, took. Um, it was literally, uh, I would say an hour and a half to edit it, um, and then an hour to render, an hour to upload, and then 45 minutes it took to process it, so... Um, it's just gonna have to be that way for the foreseeable future. Um, maybe I can get a free night sometime in the not too distant future, uh, to get a fixed version. Preferably next Sunday AD. Yeah, to get a, to get a fixed version up, but, uh, we, we will see. Um, in the meantime, we have to, uh, press ahead because this is a weekly show and the show must go on. So let's go ahead and get into some of the news we have here. First off, uh, kind of a light little thing, um, because I don't think either of us are interested in these toys, um, but... I'm uh, kinda? Really? Uh, uh, mainly because of the character. Okay, well, we have a official uh, press release type thing for the Common Rider Gaim CSM Lockseed Karishima set, uh, which is all the Lockseeds for Common Riders Zengetsu and Ryugen, as well as their various faceplates that appeared throughout the show. Yeah, I'm more interested in Zengetsu. I think he was one of the best writers in Gaim. Um, like, I think the best writer in Gaim, thinking about it. So, nice to see him getting a CSM release. So, yeah. Yeah, that's really all I gotta say. I just like Zengetsu. He's definitely one of the better uh, characters, and he his first form is actually my favorite in Guy. I love how simplistic and regal it is. Um, ah, uh, yeah. Actually, the I, I, like the Kachidoki flags thing he got in the uh, uh, stage show was. Uh, I I thought that was a pretty good suit too. It's a really good kit bash. I'll I'll put it. Um, yeah, I mean, like I, I know they're kit bashes, but like, yeah, I still love them. Uh, however, I don't think I'll be picking up this set in particular, A, because of price, and B, because, um, I have a DX Sengoku driver. I got it back during that early game hype. Um, ah. and the, for those of you who aren't aware, the CSM lock seat and faceplate molds are actually different than the DX ones. They actually change the molds on those 
to a make it show accurate and a and b make it a little more uh compatible with things um uh just generally speaking across the board uh because they they knew everything they had to release from the outset so it wasn't like they had to kind of jury rig things when they came back later um so if you're gonna get this make sure you're already getting the csm sengoku or which I'm sure there are Gaim super fans out there who already have that pre-ordered and maybe even paid off, but uh, that's that's not someone who I am. Um, yeah. But if it is someone, I, who, I get. Oh, go ahead. I don't know. Just I'll probably just maybe I'll just pick it up for the lock seed because I'm not, honestly I'm not really that interested in getting a CSM Gaim driver, but like yeah. That's fair. Um, but uh, if you are someone who's going to be picking. Uh, this up. Uh, pre-orders went live on the 6th and they will be continuing until the 18th. Uh, they will, these, this item will ship out in October of this year if everything goes according to plan. And the price in US dollars is $150.54 before shipping. Look, that was a lot of info. I mean, I, I guess we have a lot of Gaim fans watching. There's a lot of Gaim fans in general, so I guess you want to, like, inform them. Yeah, and I want to, I want to, I want to be a little more informative when it comes to from now on. I, I went back and like redid uh, certain parts of our format here just to just to kind of make things a little better um, going going forward because uh, it does seem like we're going to be doing this show for a while. So I want to be able to just spout off stuff like that at the end for people who might be interested. But uh, hey, in case that isn't enough information for you or I forget to give that for something else later in the show... All the news links are down in the video or podcast description, depending on where you're listening. Yeah. And next, now we get to the uh, unfortunate part of the podcast. Yeah. Um, so y'all might remember from one of our earlier episodes, we were talking about uh, recent allegations that had come forward regarding Tetsuro Kurata, who played Minami Kotaro, a.k.a. Kamen Rider Black, in the Kamen Rider series. And, um, basically what was going around was that he was trying to profit off of the likeness of Kamen Rider Black without Toei's consent or license, and that he's been taking advantage of quite a few fans, because the man runs a restaurant, and he can't run his restaurant during the pandemic, so he's been streaming a lot and basically encouraging people to give money for no other reason other than, I am Tetsuro Karada, don't you like me? Which isn't necessarily illegal, but it's kind of a massive dick move, especially with the world being in the state that it's in. And that would all be yeah. that would all be well and fine. That would be like, okay, this guy's kind of a jackass, but whatever, leave it and read. Until uh, this this past week, um, during the 50th anniversary of Common Rider, literally on the day, he did a live stream on uh, Instagram, I believe it was. Just double checking on the article here. Oh no, it was on a a live streaming app called 17 live must be like a thing in japan yeah um, but he made some statements when people were asking him questions in relation to common writer because hey it's a it's a main writer actor doing a live stream on the 50th anniversary i'd, I'd kind of be surprised if he didn't get common writer questions he made several statements that yeah and besides go ahead like I was, I was gonna say. Besides, he's profiting. He's using Common Rider Black memorabilia in his steak restaurant. So you know, kind of be odd if people didn't ask him questions if he's using it as a major selling point of his post career. Yeah. Um. But he made the following. Uh. This article words it as surprising. Uh. Statements where he said, "I don't like the story of Common Rider." Even if it's the 50th anniversary, I'm not a common writer. I just happen to be a writer in the past, and I don't really like common writer. And when people responded, basically being like, yo, why are you being such a dick? It's the 50th anniversary. I, if you're live streaming, you should probably be like a little more supportive. He kept, he repeatedly blocked people for making these comments. Hmm. Basically making yeah, that. The dude. The best way I can allegorize it is he he kind of went into like a Maddox level of um, regression of his old fan base. And that was very upsetting to read when I saw that article, because um, I first saw that article literally right after I finished uh, exporting last week's episode. And I was like, oh, 
you're not a common writer. You just happened to be a writer in the past. All right, bye, Felicia. That 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 was basically my response to these statements. You don't want to be a writer? Fine. Don't ever show your face around this fandom again. Um, and uh, that was probably going to be the summary of my statements on this week's episode until just a few days ago, he posted a follow-up apology on his Instagram, basically saying that, uh, you know, I, I wasn't really feeling too good. I was in a bad mood. I shouldn't have been live streaming. Uh, writer is a big part of my life and I look forward to the future of it. Um, which says to me, like, there may be a small kernel of truth that, like, he felt bad that he was so rude and aggressive about it. But also, I feel like he's backpedaling because he found out about Black Sun. Yeah. Um, uh, here, I'm gonna make my statement on this. Go okay. Ahead. So, I get having resentment for a franchise. Many Power Rangers actors have resentments for the franchise and don't want to see the fandom again, or, like, even Sentai actors and other writer actors. However, if you're going to profit off, like, with, like, you're gonna use the face of your character, like Common Rider Black, to promote your steak restaurant and other avenues, why the hell would you dis... Why the hell would you just say, I hate it, now, here, buy, buy into me, just... It makes no sense. It's like you're asking for failure or something. I don't know. Uh, I'm sorry, that sounded very disjointed. It, it sounded better in my head, but basically what I'm trying to say is, like, I wouldn't mind this if he wasn't using the face of Common Rider to promote his steak restaurant. You're very much in a don't That's bite all the got. hand that feeds you kind of mind. Yeah. Um, like, again, I, like, who knows what could have happened? Like, maybe it just doesn't happen. Also, this dude appeared for cameos in, like, the T Tyson movies and stuff. And also, he's the he's the actor who's played the, like, he's appeared the most on Common Rider television with Black and Black RX and, like, seek and, like, cameos and Decade and stuff. So it's like, what what happened? It's it's weird. I, I, this guy's an enigma. I, I really feel like the pandemic must be, like, playing playing major havoc on his mind or something like that. Or maybe this is just built up resentment over time that's just now coming to the forefront. This is one of those things where it's like it's it's upsetting as a fan to see, but we'll probably never know the full story. Maybe if there's like a documentary yeah, and I don't need 10 to. years, but... Like, I don't need to. I don't want to be like... I don't want to pry into people's personal lives. I just want to give like my two... It's just... I don't know. That's just my thing. And like... Uh, I'm more lighthearted. Like, I, I was actually... Sorry, before go we go into that, I was just gonna say like... To anyone listening, because I know there are a number of Common Rider Black fans who are really upset by all this happening, um, I will just say that one thing I have learned very well from becoming a wrestling fan is understanding separation of character and actor. Just because you don't like that it's Tetsuro Karata is acting like a massive dick right now doesn't mean you have to stop liking Common Rider. Like, let me put it this way. I think Hulk Hogan is fucking awesome. I think he's one of the best characters of his time. He's a really just wonderfully, stupidly, cartoonishly patriotic, fun superhero character. On the flip side, Terry, Terry Bollea is a racist piece of shit, and I really wish WWE would stop parading him out at WrestleMania. Just, uh, Ooh, I didn't know that. All I knew about Hulk Hogan was that he had a horrible connect Xbox Connect game. All right, then. Uh, it, it's a trip. I'll send you a video about it later. I'll I'll look forward to that. But um, uh, let's let's move on to something a little more light, which is that in celebration of the 50th anniversary, there is going to be common writer themed sake. Which a booze. Which, yeah, for those of you who aren't aware, sake is basically a very Japanese specific uh type of alcohol i'm i'm told it's akin to wine but instead of being based in grapes it's based in rice i've never actually had sake myself so i can't speak to whether this is something i'd want to own or not i did buy the chris jericho um oh god what's what's the name champagne i did buy the chris jericho champagne so if i'm if i would buy that I'd probably buy this, but I have no idea how I would get a hold of it. And also, I've never drank sake before, so I don't know if I want my first experience with sake to be a promotional item, which is what this basically is. Um, yeah. Also, this is going to be uh, extremely limited. 
Yeah. It's going to be releasing on, uh, it says January 12th. I wonder if that means this year or next year. No, this, this article is from quite this a This is while. an old article. Well, How why, did, why are we featuring this then? I don't know. This popped up in my newsfeed the other day. So Maybe it was like recommended, like most popular articles or something. Oh god! I guess so. But we're featuring it now. It's on the recording. It's on the tape permanently. Dang it! So hey, folks, if you want to pick up some common writer sake, it's out there. It exists. There's very limited quantities. Um, it is going to the retail price is sixty dollars in USD. So if you wanna if you wanna go find that and pick that up somewhere. Uh, let, let us, let us know what you think in the comments down below. There you go. Driving that YouTube engagement. I, I, I managed to save this segment. Um, yeah, but let's, let's move swiftly on to, uh, some Ultraman news, uh, which yeah. is, uh, the first article is that the, uh, Ultraman Mebius manga stories or manga, depending on what pronunciation you prefer, uh, that were originally only published in, I believe, magazine compilations as manga is first published in Japan, are going to be getting a compilation release, um, which yeah. is pretty, uh, pretty exciting. Um, there's yeah, it's going to have like 512 pages, and with not 190 of them being brand new material not found in any other books. Yeah, um, so if you're a big Mebius fan, this might be something worth checking out it's coming out uh in celebration of ultraman's 40th anniversary it said or no oh no this is no, no, maybe this was okay maybe it's maybe it's his 15th anniversary and ultraman's 55th so Re reminder that i'm not that well versed in ultraman yet um, yeah oh i've not seen maybe either but i heard it's really darn good hooray perhaps we will check that out at some point in the in yeah, the I know history. that's where the famous like scene of like this human yelling at like an Ultraman saying, "What have you done?" and then there's just buildings destroyed everywhere. Oh yeah, okay, I didn't know that's what that's from. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think that's like in the first episode, so pretty striking way to begin. But uh, hopefully, um, this gets a stateside release because uh, this this article doesn't say anything about that. I did leave a comment. Uh, Asking if they knew anything about a stateside release and got uh, nothing back. That's okay, people. Are... Um, but uh, any any Ultraman fans out there, maybe specific fans, this might be something to watch out for, especially if it gets translated. Probably be a cool thing to pick up. And yeah. Speaking of Mebius, uh, Mebius was used in Gamma Future, right? I will. Uh, yeah. I think it was. I think it was Ginga, Gaia, and. Oh, Tiga. I know Tiga was used. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's those three. It's Ginga, Gaia, and Tiga. Okay, so not related to Mebius, but still, uh, Ultraman Z Gamma Future is gonna get SH, SH figure art, and it looks pretty sick. I actually have a funny anecdote about this figure. So, uh, producer, of the, like, creator of the No More Heroes series, Suda51, was doing a live stream showcasing stuff for No More Heroes 3, and at the end he said, ah, I gotta go pre-order the Ultraman Z Gamma Future figure. <laughs> Oh, uh, what a mood. Um, yeah. Because this is he's a, he's a favorite, pretty big ultra. Uh, oh, go ahead. Yeah, he's a pretty big Tokusatsu fan. Uh, like, uh, he has Zero One figures. Uh, he has, like, a Common Under 5 CSM. Nice. He loves this stuff. Uh, but uh, this is actually my favorite um, of Zet's forms. So uh, definitely, definitely interested in picking this up, especially because it seems very fully featured. In the accessories, the the sculpt and articulation blending seems much better than on Alpha Edge. I was actually going to get Alpha Edge, and then I had to cancel the pre-order at the last minute due to other obligations coming up. But um, if you are interested in picking up this very nice looking figure, uh, it is going... Uh, Pre-orders are already live. Uh, they went live on April 9th. And the figure will ship out in September of this year, and it's going to set you back... Uh, sixty-five dollars and twenty-six cents in U.S. dollars, uh, plus shipping and handling and all that fun stuff. I believe this is a web exclusive. Yeah. Um. So there will probably be an extra middleman charge on top of that if you're coming from any area outside of Pants. Just be aware of that, folks. Um, yeah. But now we get on to 
the the big news thing of the week uh, that I kind of buried the lead on at the start of the show because I wanted to be cheeky. Uh, but uh, for those of you who are unaware, Hasbro basically had their, oh, you're not doing Toy Fair this year? All right, we'll do Toy Fair our, our own on YouTube with uh, Blackjack and Hookers is what is what they did. There was no Blackjack and Hookers, but there was Kevin Smith. Which really, when when you add it up, is basically the same thing. Um, yeah, I guess. But uh, we did get some reveals for the Power Rangers Lightning Collection and a bit of news regarding Dino Fury out of this event. Uh, first... Okay, but we got terrible news on the Lightning Collection. All right, I'm gonna, gonna get a bit heated because I, I hate this. Okay, okay, let me run down the actual news first and then you can go into okay. whatever rant you have. So, okay. the Lightning Collection reveals we got is a Pulse-exclusive wave of uh, Metallic Armor Mighty Morphin Rangers, uh, which is basically the rest of the ones we didn't already have, except for White is suspiciously absent. Um, I would think of how much they pander to the Tommy crowd, they would do that, but I guess they're even too lazy for its nostalgia pattern. Mm -hmm. But uh, get in. joining the Pink Ranger we already have in Metallic Armor colors, we've got... Yellow, blue, black, and red, um, which are all, of course, going to be Pulse exclusives. And then on top of that, we got the reveal of the Red Tyrannosaurus Century from the Boom uh, Comics universe, which is going to be a Target exclusive. Um, Buster, I'm just going to let you go off because I feel like you're, okay. you're, you're holding stuff in well, real I'll start with the positives. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll start with the positives. Uh, first off, Red Century? Not my first choice for a comics exclusive figure, but sure, it, it's a cool suit. I'll take it. It's technically skull, so well, you know, it's a skull figure. Oh wow, they better hide like an unhelmeted head in the box somewhere, like behind I the hope. character. I hope they're not hide set up. The I know they're not set up, but that like be someone so better, great. like it would, like I, someone work on. Like I know there's like lightning collection monitors out there. Work on like a skull head, and I'll buy it from you. Anyway, so that was like the best one. Like I, I know that was the one they ended on. However, the fact now, okay, now I get that this is probably not affecting the like other waves. Probably, I think, I, I hope, because it's like it's a repaint, basically, just the same molds with like more fancy schmancy elements. However, the fact that this was the only thing you announced at your big event that was just more nostalgia pander. I kind of get it because like you know, pro there's Transformers fans tuning in, and they might be passively familiar with Power Rangers, so they want to show the familiar stuff. Well, that's the thing, is a lot of these panels were surprisingly sparse. Like, I was going through the news on Friday, because I, I didn't watch the... I, I, I know how long and drawn out it's going to be, so I'm just like, I'll, I'll stay off social media and then look at the news when I get home. Um, And, like, the only two ones that revealed a ton of stuff, I felt like, were Marvel Legends and Transformers Generations, and even then, it was less than you'd expect out of, like, a Toy Fair. It was it was just kind of like, here's the whole next wave plus a tease. Yeah. Okay, but still, why are you continuing Metallic Armor? Well, did the Metallic Armor Pink just sell that well? I, it's just... I have no idea. There's no way to track that as far as I know, but I, yeah. will, I will say this to play a bit of Devil's Act. It's a set they started, and they seem really focused on trying to finish sets. Not a lot of new teams that are being added to the line at the moment, and I feel like that's because they have a counter lot argument. Of I got counter argument. These morphers. Where's yellow and silver? Especially silver. I agree. I agree. We do need those characters pretty bad. Uh, uh, like if if they're so trying to focus on finishing teams. Where the hell is be the finishing of Beast Morphers? You know that the season that you started to relaunch the franchise with. Yeah, I wanted, to, I not. really wanted them and Roxy to come out during Beast Morphers season two, and they just never got announced, which makes me feel like they're probably going to end up being stragglers. We're probably going to complete most of the teams we've already started before we get to them, which does irk me quite a bit, I will say. But like, I'm. I'm one of those guys yeah. who, like, I just know way too much about the toy industry, so I'm like, they have all these molds, they're probably just trying to stretch them as far as they can before they start making new stuff again. They gotta they gotta really get their money's worth. Um, yeah. I think what really pissed me off was the way they announced them. They did one at a time, making you think, oh, maybe it's something different. No, it's the same. Just 
that was a horrible way to reveal. They should have just revealed all four at once and then like go into individual detail about each four. Okay, I didn't like that know was a they horrible did. way to do it. I didn't know they did that. That's I was... yeah, like I was like I had a mental breakdown on stream because <laughs> I wish I savored it, but I didn't feel like savoring it. <laughs> um and. But yeah, I think Sentry looks good, but everything else, I'm like, nope, hard pass. Yeah, yeah, the Terrano Sentry looks good. I wouldn't mind getting a couple of those. Were it not for the fact that they're a Target exclusive, and this is where I got a bitch a little bit, because, um, I don't know how aware you are. Of okay, this go matter, ahead. But, um, Hasbro and Target have been having quite the year. Um, it started out with uh, a little bit of Transformers and then leaked over into G.I. Joe and nearly killed oh, G.I. Really? Joe again. Yeah, yeah, this has been a thing going on for quite a while with Hasbro having Target exclusives that because of the pandemic end up being what? really hard to find in stores and Target's website and their servers suck so bad so it is next to impossible to get a pre-order on them when they're going live. You have to, like, have your finger on the F5 key the moment it goes live. Oh, so that's why there's no Dino Fury figures at Target. Yeah, it, it's sold out. Well, this is more geared towards, like, the collector stuff. Um, ah, okay. But, but still, maybe that's why Hasbro doesn't want to supply them with anything, even the basic stuff, but... I remember seeing, like, because I, look, I looked at some of the news at lunch, I think... And I saw this, and I was like, okay, that's cool. Oh, Target exclusive? Let's see how that plays out. And then I get home from work, and I see it going live, and, like, it was literally, it's live, it's sold out. And I was like, yep, that's the thing the G.I. Joe collectors have been complaining about for a year now, so glad that bled over in the Power Rangers. Thanks. Hasbro. Also, there's, a, there's something, there's some, there's, some nose, there's some noise in the back. I don't know, it, it keeps popping in and out. Uh, that's, that's just my computer. It's getting a bit beleaguered because it's, it's now the summer and it's warm. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, it's actually spring, but it was playing. Yeah, anyway, on to the actual fun news of this. Oh, actually, uh, there's a quick little tidbit that, uh, it's mostly for me. Finally, Hasbro acknowledged Power Rangers Battle for the Grid, which is this really good fighting game on all platforms. Highly recommended. It's only 20 bucks. Uh, if you love Marvel vs. Capcom, you'll love this. But they but they mentioned that there's some news for that game incoming, and they were like big news. And I'm like, season four? Okay, let's go. Because each fighting game has a season where they add new characters. So that that was basically me news. But I'm very happy that they're not going to kill off Battle for the Grid. Cool, glad to hear that. I don't care. Yeah, so I'll probably games. I'll probably gush about it next week because it's Toku adjacent, and you know. But uh, we did get some actual Dino Fury news out of all this, if you can believe it, which is a casting update. We now know who will be playing the gold Dino Fury Ranger and what that character's oh. name is. Okay, before this, before the, they they showed they announced this with this really cool video. Have you seen it? It's on the Power Rangers YouTube channel. I I heard Bye. nothing about a video. Okay, uh, I'll link it to you. You can go go, go ahead. Uh, keep speaking, I'll find the video. Uh, well, I was just going to say that, uh, it was announced that Jordan Fight will be playing, um, Aeon? I want to say that's how it's pronounced? I, I haven't heard anyone yeah. say it yet. Is it pronounced Aeon? Do you know? Eh, Aeon, eh, like, Ion, did they say? Ion. Ion. Um, and, um, uh, like, cool like, like, Initially, I thought it was, like, he is the- uh, Go ahead. He is the first African-American Six Ranger in the history of the franchise, which is nice. Nice, see yeah. a little progressiveness going. Um, so in the video I just linked to VAC, um, the, the way they revealed it, so they're like, so yeah, we're having a fun time on set, but we're missing one more, and then this Jordan so fight just comes out, and he's like, he has his Hawaiian shirt, and he's just like, he comes out with the most, like, excited smile, and like, and like just like, casual walk, and I'm just, I'm already endeared to this guy. I'm, I'm so excited to see his character, uh, hopefully next, next episode, but like... I do. Oh, I, I do like his style. He hey he guys, seems like a very Prime nice guy, and Ranger like he's got one of the coolest so hairdos I've seen on Power Rangers in a while. Yeah. Um, taking a second Anything to else? listen to his voice here. Yeah, yeah. He see, he seems like a pretty pretty nice strapping young lad. So I look forward to seeing him de debut either next week or after the hiatus. Um, yeah. Also, with that name, I'm just I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. Uh, my my theory about uh, the Six Ranger being from modern day uh, 
modern day, uh, I forgot the name, but uh, Zato's planet. Mm, mm, mm. Rafcon. Rafcon, yeah. He's, he, with that alien sounding name, very similar to Zato sounding name, I would not be surprised if this dude's from either modern day Rafcon or he is a, they could do like a Zane type thing where he's a member of the original team of Dino Rangers too. I think, I think it would be more interesting if he was from modern day Rafcon. Like, so like there's going to be a culture disparity between like the old man and the he's young hipster. He's got all this you know? slang that Zato doesn't know. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, that would be so great. Uh, uh just the potential is already just making my brain go, yes, I want to see this guy. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it. But uh, before we get to that Zoomer slang, we've got some Earth Zoomer slang to get to uh, in the new releases for this week. Quite a bit! I think this is the most new releases we've had in the show. Uh, yeah, it was a busy week, but uh, first and foremost is Power Rangers Dino Fury Season 1, Episode 7, Stego search what is a quick opening thoughts on this episode you can give me buster javi finally got to do things yeah it was it was like, great getting some javi focus like on twitter before this episode aired i was just making like memes about like how javi does nothing everyone goes nuts <laughs> like the fandom just like be like he's the best character and he's like he's done nothing He's, like uh, now, he's I can, a cool, so, understated him, or he had that yeah, until this episode. Yeah, uh, I can see why people like. I now he got actual character, and I actually like his character. Yeah, um, um the whole thing in this episode, they did a very good job per portraying somebody who's got a wide range of musical interest and is uh, being stifled, shall we say, by their parents. Uh, okay, I uh, will get to the implications of that soon. Yeah. Uh, but first, actually, I quite like um his what like um the 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 thing about musical instruments, him like like being like I want to master all the instruments or something like that. I, he did directly say that, he but that's what I got the from the four elements. <laughs> the four the four instrumental elements. Anyway, yeah. Uh, I kind of like that can apply to many interests. Like as a toy collector, wanting to like collect us all the toys of a specific line, or as a game, you want to preserve all the games you like. You know. It like it like would like Javi's dad would be like you already got one you're rich enough that that hit home hard with me with like my game collecting so it felt it felt a little bit like that and I also kind of got winds of like uh, parents from from shows uh, like one one thing I can think to compare it to that popped into my head is um, oddly enough the Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. Uh, that was a show I grew up on, and I remember there was one episode very specifically where a character was being discouraged from trying a new thing because all they did was try new things and nothing ever stuck, and, and, they, and the lesson of the episode was basically, well, that just means I have to keep trying things until I find stuff on them. Yeah. And that's where I thought they were going in this, but it went to a very different place that I actually kind of dug. Yeah. Yeah. Can I talk about the, uh, Javi's dad? Because I, I kind of, like, I've been holding this in for, like, all week. Yeah, Warren Garcia is a big bag of dicks. Yeah, uh, we already knew he was kind of a prick, but, um, I'm gonna come out and say it. He is an abusive parent, and I really hope the show acknowledges it as it is. Because I know Power Rangers, like, they're like, they're like, oh, but the parent has some sympathy, or like, oh, they have a dead wife or something. No. Acknowledge it as it is. This is abusive parenting. It was, like, I've seen multiple people, like, I've said this on Twitter, and multiple people are like, oh yeah, he kind of is. Acknowledge it how, it how it is, and either have him own up to it, or have Javi be like, I don't need you. I mean, Something like that. That very much feels like that's what they're going for, especially with the whole thing of him having been a police officer during the conceptual Yeah. Series. Um, I would not be... Um, like, I'll, I'll just say this to kind of temper your and anyone listening's expectations. I, I, that, I, this is like, I just, this is my hope. I don't think they're going to do it. I don't think they're going to, I, it's a kid show is the thing. And like, pe yeah. people hate you saying about that, that about Power Rangers, but it is it's a show targeted towards kids. I don't think given how liberal this writing staff seems to be, I don't think they're going to necessarily redeem Warden Garcia by the end of the show. But I would not be surprised if there's some sort of reconciliation rather than just uh, get Javi out of that home environment kind of element. Yeah. Um, like, that's, like, I don't know. That's that, that's kind of what, like, I would, that is just, like, I think I'm just personally inserting my wholesome 127 or something. I don't, what, I don't know what 127 means. You know what I mean. Yeah. One thing I would say I, I really came out of this episode wanting is, um, 
a focus episode for oh god, I'm I'm really terrible with names, Susan, but the Blue Range. Um, uh, Ollie. Ollie has not had a straight focus episode yet, and I feel like we really need it now that we've gotten so much focus on the Garcias. Like, yeah, g- give me give me an episode about his relationship with his mom to contrast what's going on with Javi and his. I I really yeah. want that at some. Yeah, and honestly, like, Ollie's already, like, an endearing character, because he, he always gets these little funny bits of sarcasm uh, in the episodes. And like, so I feel like that would be a pretty easy sell. And, like, one thing I didn't catch on the initial watch, but uh, one of the reasons, like, hey, cheap plug for friend of the show, Database Ranger, I love watching his deep dives every week, because he points out one or two little things that I'll have missed. One thing yeah, he pointed same. out was... Um, I, 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 they only show the price sticker for, like, a brief moment in the episode, so I thought the Kitar was $90, it's $900, and then at the end of the episode, when the Rangers get Javi a new Kitar, and all, all he says, we all pay, we all pitched in, he, Jake points out, Zeta doesn't have a job, Amelia had to borrow money from Ollie a few episodes ago, Ollie might have just straight up bought that Kitar. And if, if if it ever gets revealed that that's what happens, like all all he's gonna win the biggest bro award of this season. Yeah, maybe that's why they bundled his sword with uh, Javi's, and not because they're both dudes. Uh, that's story for that. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, this was a really strong episode. I thought, um, like there's yeah, of- even outside of the like bigger implications, I liked it a lot. Um. The only, the only thing I would say is just, like, it, it really felt like they were showing Sentai footage from the episode where Doom Tower dies. So, like, it felt really weird to me that he ends up surviving the episode. Like, where are we going with this? Oh, actually, uh, correction. This is the second to last episode where Boom Tower is alive in the Sentai. Okay, so do we think he's gonna get destroyed next week, then? Yeah, probably, because he, he seems like, uh, like, I mean, I don't I, kind of like starting to like grow to like his kind of villainous like just being the the hard stick of the group but yeah i think i'm ready for wazul to come in who is the like we already know wazul is coming in from some promo images but uh i'm just ready for like hey, you know boom tower has been fun but uh i'm ready for the next general all right uh well let's go ahead and move on then to uh kikai sentai zenkaiger episode six getting trashed and treated like trash uh, Buster, what are some, some basic thoughts on this? Vroom. Vroom. Good boy. Vroom is a good That's boy. It. Vroom is a good boy, and Majin is an adorable baby who must be. Yes. Um, yeah, uh, honestly, uh, okay, well, if I go into a bit deeper thoughts, I like, this may be even like Majin's character even more, because I already liked her, because she, she was kind of, yeah, she's so, like, clumsy, and she's kind of clumsy, and I kind of like how they played up. Like, the rooms and rooms, like, like, oh, you gotta play by the books, and, like, you gotta, like, clean up, you gotta do good with the people. I mean, and it's kind the of... fact that he was a janitor for the first few episodes. Oh, yeah, I kind of completely forgot about that. Thanks for reminding me. Um, and, um, Magin's kind of like, oh, I'm kind of clumsy, and I'm, but I'm trying my best, and I like how they c- contrast those two personalities and how they, uh, come together. And I'm very happy about the Sentai gear they used this episode. Uh, Go Busters, that's my, I think that's my favorite Sentai, so I'm like, you know, yeah, let's go. And I love, like, the little recreation of the ready, go, and the powers. That and Majin dancing in the background while Vroom was cranking the gun was just the best. Yeah, Um, apparently that's the Magi Ranger dance, or, like, part of the Magi Ranger dance. Oh, that's cool. Um, but, like, I I also want to get just a little critical for a second here, because, um... Sure. I, I have the same problem with this week's episode that I did with last week, where it's like, I really enjoy the ideas they have going on here. However, I feel like they never really crescendoed and coalesced. There's a moment where Majin and Vroom kind of kind of resolve their tension and go like, no, let's be friends and work together. But like, there's never a strong impetus for them to decide to do this. Um, I felt like the episode was missing a moment where... Majin goes like maybe I should follow Vroom's lead, or Vroom goes like, well, Ma- Majin's not per- not really skilled at this, but she's really good at a certain part of this, and I can use that to my advantage. I felt like we needed that moment, and it never really came. They kind of realized that separately on their own, and then they just kind of bumped back into each other and went like, yes, friends now, good, finish episode. 
Yeah, uh, that's kind of been like, uh, honestly, like, I know you mentioned that last week. I kind of noticed it this week, too. I kind of felt like a, l- a tad rushed. Mm. Um, um, But yeah, I, I can kind of see that. I still think it's a good episode, and I think it works okay enough that it's not that big of an issue, but it's still kind of an issue. Oh, yeah. I Although, we also... Really... Go ahead. I was going to mention the next plot, but uh, okay. you can go ahead. I was just going to say, like, I, I, I have that criticism of it, that same criticism for last week. However, I did enjoy this episode more than I did last week's just on the strength of the character interactions. I felt like the stuff between Majin and Vroon in this episode was a lot a lot better and a lot more fun than the stuff between Kaito and Juren was last week. And that's that's no like slight on those characters that's just writing in that particular Yeah. Um also trash Sentai. And I love the little like gag where like Senchan is like, I should probably Google if they're the first. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Um also just love the love the creativeness of having a trash dimension exist. Like that is definitely something a kid would think of of like, oh, I put my trash in this receptacle and we, we take it up to the end of the driveway and it gets taken away every week by a big truck and I never see it again. It probably gets thrown into a pocket dimension or something. Yeah, that that's a what like that's like a wonderful childlike imagination of Sentai that I love. Yeah. Um also we get a tease for a villain who's gonna be a big part next week and uh I'm not gonna say anything about them because that we're gonna save that for next week, but I'm very excited. And uh um, apparently just... this villain was Go ahead. Yeah, you were saying? Apparently this villain was not initially gonna be in the story, but the actor who plays this villain was so good as he was auditioning for uh, Zen Kaiser, but uh, Kai- Kaito's actor got the role. But apparently, he was so good as a second close, they decided to, let's make him a rival character. Mm-hmm. And like that makes it make total sense how this was like kept under wraps for so long because it wasn't ever meant to be part of the rollout. And like you, you saw my tweet when it when it dropped, I was like, "What? The- how was this not spoiled by magazine scans? What the heck?" Yeah, I was like, wait, is that the upcoming six? Or I was like, no, it's not. Okay. Yeah, because how? There are people who think it's the six, and oh, they're doing the six is evil right away. But no, uh, we've seen a silhouette of the six, and the six looks very different. Yeah, very piratey, I think. Makes me happy. But uh, I think that's everything we have to say on Zenkaiju. Yeah, um, uh, a lot of big stuff next week, but that's not next week. Yeah, so let's go ahead and move on to uh, the first of our two premieres we have to discuss this week. Uh, first off, independent tokusatsu. Well, kind of oh, independent cool. tokusatsu, because it's still funded by Bandai. Uh, but it is yeah. the first episode of Girl Gun Lady Nighttime Ray Gun Battles. Uh, Buster, what did you think of the first episode of the show? That was certainly a first episode of a show. Yeah. This, this weirdly to me kind of felt like Precure meets Amazons. Uh, it just felt kind of like, okay, I like the beginning part, but when we got into the death game stuff, it felt like, okay, this is kind of standard. It felt like they, like, I like, go ahead. Like, I like the part where she's, like, building the mini plot, but, like, the passion of mini plot, that's a wonderful scene. Yeah, that's, but then when I get to the death- way, was just the most wonderfully bizarre thing. Yeah, also, speaking of songs, the opening slaps, uh, it's pretty good. Just, uh, yeah, actually, it was so good, and I was like, I was pissed that nobody uploaded to YouTube that I used my second channel that I haven't used in forever to post it on YouTube. So, uh, mm-hmm. thank you for all for future people who are going to switch up that opening. You thank me. Which, by the way, reminds me, I need to mention, uh, this show is actually getting an official release on the Bandai Spears YouTube channel with English subtitles. So, if anybody wants to check this out, just go ahead and search it up on YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I was originally, like, originally we, we watched this through fan subs, but then it's just like, oh, we're gonna officially sub it, so I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I do like the, uh, I, I like how well incorporated the model building is into this show. Like, they reload, so they have to find new sprue trees to make more bullets. That was really f- They reload, so they have to find new sprue trees to make more bullets. That was really fun. Um... The uh the only thing that was kind of off putting to me just initially on an yeah. aesthetic level the the gun girls themselves and like how heavily caked in makeup they are like I can handle girls with cotton candy cotton candy hair and weird outfits like I I sat through a whole year of Poppy Pee Popo and went like yeah this is a good character um 
But like they they just caked those girls in so much makeup that it gave me an uncanny valley. Yeah, I did get used to it, but initially it was just like, what the flip were they thinking? Yeah. Uh, and we didn't really get much from them. We mostly got stuff from, like, the actual contestants of the battle instead of the generals. Which um, set up some interesting stuff, where, like, apparently if you get killed, you just go back to the real world without your memories, but also they're gonna introduce a death mechanic next week? It's, it's I don't know, like, it, I, I, some people are calling this show bad. It's not bad, it's just, I need to see where this goes. Yeah, I, I think this is a first episode that's going to live and die on how well the rest lays out. Hey, we'll be covering the rest of the series, so uh, be sure to tune in for our thoughts on how that all plays out, I guess. Yeah. Speaking of playing out, hey! uh, our first Kamen Rider show! Yeah, we're discussing Kamen Rider! Spin-off, extra material streaming series, Kamen Rider Gems The President's episode AKA 1. A.K.A. Genom vs. Dowser thing. This was... Yeah. Oh my! I legitimately thought this was cool. I don't know about you, but I I love. It. How you feel? Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I like this a lot. Uh, this is clearly a spinoff thing that they made on the cheap. With like they had to justify this with flimsy excuses. They clearly this is only an 11 minute episode. If you're wondering, yeah, we have they clearly two didn't have. Here's a bunch of fluff to get us into the plot. Go. Yeah, and there's only two episodes. Uh, unlike the three that Geo versus Decade got. Um. Which we didn't cover that, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, I like this a lot. Um, it's very much Genom X Aid focused rather than Zero One like Thouser focused, which is fine, I think. But I, I, it's called Genoms. I get it why they didn't call it Genom versus Thouser. Well, Genom is a lot but, more well marketable. Yeah, especially with Thouser's controversial reception, at least in the West. Uh, like I've heard like some anecdotes of like. Some Eastern fans not liking Thouser, but I, I can't say for certain uh, about that. Yeah. But um, one one thing I always love to pair it is like, hey, uh, if you're a, if you're a Japanese Tokusatsu fan, please interact with the Western fandom more. We'd love to get to know your side of opinion. Yeah. Um. But but no, it, I know we have pricks here. We we all have pricks. Don't worry. Just yeah. interact with the good people. Uh. And that's that's besides the point. But yeah, I, I like this a lot. Um. They cut, again, it's very rushed, it's very, like, oh, we got all, like, flimsy excuses to get get him his powers. Although, I did like the excuse they give for Thouser being able to use the Zaya suit. That's because Thouser gets infected with the Bugster virus, and that changes his suit. I thought, okay, that's that's an okay explanation for that. Yeah, that was really small. Man. Yeah. Um, I don't know, this was just, yeah, this just was a lot of fun. Like, it's, it's kind of stupid. It's, like, the plot is that Thouser is starting a new company... And his his plan to start a new company is I'm gonna set up a little office in fucking Daybreak Town, and I'm gonna spend all my startup cash on a Humagear. Um, but then then as soon as Dan the Man shows up, it's just fun character interaction and comparing and contrasting these two very similar but set apart characters. And and I had a lot of fun watching. Yeah. Um, very, like, especially since these are the same, the same writer wrote both of these series and characters, so it, it's very interesting to see him, like, come and, like, co compare and contrast his, like, uh, like, style of how he wrote both of these bastard villains. Um, and, like, uh, I mean, I, I already know, because you watched it while we were off mic, but, like, just, just for the people, t tell me how you felt about that, that cliffhanger. I'm, I'm not gonna say what it is. I was very happy with it. I got spoiled on it earlier, and I'm kinda pissed, but... I'm still. It was still a very great moment when they showed it. When when I'm I not gonna say what it is because I didn't get spoiled. I when I watched it uh, last night, I legitimately jumped out of my chair and cheered. I was so excited. Yeah, oh, and uh, but, I, I, we'll talk about it next week. Yeah, uh, hopefully, hopefully the next part of this lives up to everything this this part established. But uh, that that's gonna do it for our new releases this week. Um. Let's get into some, some old stuff and toys we may have picked up. Uh, Buster, do you want to go first? Sure. Uh, mine's is kind of a little long. Your, yours is probably a little shorter, so I'll go. Mine's probably a little longer. So I attempted to watch Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Episode 1 and the rest of the show, and I got through Episode 1. Uh, it's fine. It's okay. But, man, I could literally be watching any other toku. I like. I'm like. I could be watching any other Power Ranger season. Some Sentai series I haven't seen, like some Common Riders, some Ultraman, Garo, 
some indie. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just feel icky watching it now. I just feel like there's so there's much better stuff I could be doing. I mean, I I don't feel as alienated towards the the MMPR and Zordon era in general as you seem to be, but like I will admit there's only a few episodes of MMPR I actually really enjoy going back to watch, and the pilot is one of them. Um, the episode one, not uh, but um, a lot of that show is just kind of like, yeah, this is of its time, and I'm not really of that time, so uh, I'm I'm just gonna go over here for a little bit while you guys keep watching this. Have fun. Yeah, I don't. I'm not gonna continue it. At least not now. Um, I'm not even sure if I'll watch any old Toku. This I probably will. Not sure which one. Maybe I'll continue Time Ranger. We'll see. That's all I got. Yeah. Uh. I. I, I don't know. Uh. It's. It's one of those things where like I don't begrudge people for liking the MMPR style of storytelling. It's not really my thing until it matures into Power Ranger Zio. Uh. Which. Which brings me to. My I don't favorite. even like Zio. Really. Uh, yeah. I mean. I, I. It's aesthetic. It's just a more MMPR to me. That's what it is. See. See. That's. That's my whole thing with Zio. Zio is just. What if MMPR, but it actually hit every episode, or at least most of the episodes? Uh, I still, I don't know, I, that formula, I don't think it works for me. Uh, but hey, yeah, go ahead. That's fair. Um, and like, the, the thing I was trying to lead into there is, uh, this week I did open, because I've had it sitting around and just haven't gotten around to opening it, I got a few figures like this, but uh, Lightning Collection Zeo Green is something I got to mess around with this week. And uh, I was very impressed with that figure. It feels like a marked step up for the Lightning Collection. It does several things that I've been wanting to see from that line for a while. It's got the character-specific weapons while still keeping the team-wide weapons and in effects parts. Um, they, uh, they did the thing that I feel like all figures that have a sword should have. Um, I don't necessarily need this with gun-wielding characters, but sword-wielding characters... If you're going to do a highly articulated figure, I feel like you have to give us at least one set of gripping hands with an up and down instead of left and right hand. Um, and he uh. he has a hand like that that you can put his sword in, and it makes po getting him in cool sword poses so much easier. Plus, also, he doesn't just come with the sword and the gun, he comes with a collapsed down version of the sword that you can put in the holster, which is, which is great. That had been an issue with this line early on, where it would be like, yeah, and they have a Blade Blaster, and you only get, like, one or two versions of the Blade Blaster. Um, but, uh, this... Interesting. Th uh, this, this feels like a very fully featured figure. Um, the unhelmeted sculpt is pretty close. Not spot on, but close enough that I don't feel like it needs to be complained about. Um, then again, I have been pretty forgiving with the unhelmeted sculpts in this line, so take that with grain of salt. Um... Yeah, I, re I really enjoyed that figure. Um, I, I would definitely say go out and pick it up if you're a fan of uh, Zeo, of Adam, or of uh, just 6-inch collectibles in general, and and you have a vague interest in Power Rangers. It's one, it's one that should be on your one, I would say. Um, but uh, that's... Yeah. That I, the only Lightning Collection I have is gold, so I can't really judge. Yeah, and that's a good one. So, you know, not bad choices. Um, but yeah. what are... What are some other choices people can make, Buster, as to where to watch uh, your videos and your social media, if you want to? Uh, what's up, I'm Buster Corp. I just released a video on Wally and why it's the best of Pixar. Uh, check it out on my YouTube channel, linked in the description. That's about all I got. I mean, I also have a Twitter if you want to see me meme. That's about it. Sick. And I am The Vacuuminator. I'm a YouTuber that makes uh, toy reviews, vlogs, and media analysis. However, I am currently on hiatus, so if you want to check out uh, my backlog, um, you can do that at youtube.com slash The Vacuuminator. That's um, T-H-E-V-A-C-U-U-M-I-N-A-T-O-R. I'm also available on social media, Twitter, at The Vacuuminator, and Instagram, The Underscore Vacuuminator. Hey, I post action figure photography there, so you might see some photos of some Lightning Collection stuff sooner rather than later. I don't know. We'll find out. But uh, some other stuff you can find out is uh, all the great stuff we have here at Modular Media. You know, we've got this weekly Tokusatsu podcast. We also have a weekly professional wrestling podcast called MMWP, or Modular Media Wrestling Podcast. And we have a weekly Marvel and general comics podcast 
called the No Prize Podcast. So definitely go ahead and check those out if you haven't already on whatever podcasting platform you prefer. Go ahead and follow this podcast on whatever platform you're listening to. And please, please, please check us out on YouTube. Give this episode a like, a comment. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get every podcast we put out as we do so. Ring the bell in order to enable notifications for all those same reasons. If you want to get updates on our releases as they're happening, uh, go ahead and um, follow us on Twitter at the modular media and join our subreddit r slash module but that'll do it for this week in tokusatsu we'll see you next week when we find out what happens that week in tokusatsu <laughs> <laughs>